This is a short unit in which we briefly review the shape extraction techniques that we have learned about so far and also highlight some of the ones that we didn't have time to look into in depth before we then move on to the fusion unit number four. We have seen how to do binocular stereo matching by utilizing the apipolar geometry we can find correspondences of a point along a scan line that are similar in appearance, potentially utilizing smoothness constraints to overcome ambiguities. We can also use more than two input images, and this is called multi-view stereo. If we have more images, this helps also to overcome ambiguities and this is one of the approaches that we have seen. This is this unrolled RayNet approach that also uses multiple um, uh, input images, computes features on those, computes a cost volume, and in the end returns uh, depth maps. We have seen in this lecture how we can obtain geometry from even a single image using shading cues. And we've seen how we can remove some of these strong smoothness assumptions that we have to make by using more observations, by considering multiple images captured from the same camera viewpoint, which is called photometric stereo. Another cue that can be used, but is less frequently used because it's a very specialized application area in order to estimate geometry from even a single image is texture. If we have a scene where we know that the texture is local similar, then we can exploit this regularity also to recover uh, geometry from such a textured scene. But of course, in general, scenes are not regularly textured everywhere. And so it's difficult to apply these algorithms outside very, this very narrow domain. Another more broadly used and popular technique is uh, so-called structured light. And there's many different variants of structured light estimation algorithms. Structured light estimation algorithms uh, in uh, their very simple form use a pattern projector that projects, that illuminates a scene using a, a stripe or a dot pattern. And if that pattern is calibrated, if it is known, and the projector is known, which acts as a virtual image plane, if you will. Uh, so these are both perspective projections, but one, one device is sending out rays and the other is receiving rays, the camera. Then a single receiver, a single camera, a monocular camera is sufficient if we have such a projector to recover um, 3D information because we can do triangulation here as well. If we know um, which um, points correspond to each other, um, and if we observe a particular disparity here in the camera, then we know similar to the stereo case, we know the depth. Now the advantage of an active illumination setup is that of course can also overcome uh, surface areas that are typically hard to estimate in a classical stereo setting. For example, textless regions a white wall in an office where uh, it's really hard to match features from the RGB image. But if I project, for example, in this infrared space here, I, I project a dot pattern and I can recognize these dots in the camera, then out of a sudden I have a lot of texture that I can use for matching. There is a whole range of devices that have been developed, but really the first uh, consumer and, and cheap structured light device that has revolutionized research in this area is the Kinect version one that appeared um, in 2010 by Microsoft, it looked like this, was developed for the gaming industry, but wasn't a big success in gaming. Um, however, it was a big success in, in research, in robotics research, in computer vision, re vision research. And uh, there have been several follow-ups some of them using also time of flight 
and also setups that have been produced by other companies. This here at the bottom right is a so-called active stereo setup where also a dot pattern is projected but is combined not with a monocular but with a stereo camera that sees both at day and at night because uh, these um, are indoors and outdoors because these, these structured light approaches have the problem that the light that is emitted is very weak compared to the sunlight and so if you go outside and there's sun then you can't really uh, see your dots anymore because the projector is too weak. So here's an example of what such a projected pattern looks like. This is an example from our sensor and, and an example that we have used in um, uh, for training stereo networks for this particular active um, structured light setup. And this is a crop of this region here of the head of the gnome. And you can see the individual dots that are projected by this laser that gets diffracted at this dif uh, um, diffractive optical element into, into, into these different individual rays into this dot pattern. And then we perceive this dot pattern and because it's a random dot pattern, but we know the dot pattern, it has a very unique structure. So we know which patch this patch here corresponds to in the reference pattern. And so we can measure disparity and we can obtain depth from this. Now, um, another technique for estimating geometry is called monocular depth estimation. And in contrast to um, shape from shading, while it's also using a single image as input, it doesn't make any assumptions about the materials in the scene. In fact, it tries to directly solve the problem by using a big deep neural network that from the single RGB image directly produces the uh, depth map as shown here. While early approaches to this problem didn't use deep learning and um, didn't produce very good results, this was the first, was kind of a breakthrough technique that for the first time showed reasonable results um, for this problem using deep neural networks but as you can see, the quality of the result is still not great. There's still a lot of artifacts like this halo that we can see here. But this was from 2014 and a lot has happened since then. So here's a state of the art result from 2019 called Midas. And you can see this is a technique that has a, has a much better network architecture, has been, has been trained on much larger compute and on much, much larger data sets. And you can see that this is a very versatile algorithm that works on many different scenes reasonably well. And um, what I also want to mention is uh, a line of works that tries to go beyond estimating ju just what's visible in, in the input image, but instead tries to estimate the complete shape of an object like this bench here. And this line of research has really been popularized also by the advent of deep learning. It has actually been possible only uh, uh, through the innovations that happened in deep learning, such that it was possible from a single image. These are all single image reconstruction results. And we're going to see more of those in the next lecture, um, that it was possible from a single image to decode this into a, a shape like this or in, into a point set representation like this or into a mesh representation like this.